Oh, anyway, I guess I'll just stay right here. So name and age. Oh, I'm Charlie Johnson and I'm 51. So Charlie, how'd you get into logging? I was actually born into it. I've been, my whole family's been in this for, I'm in the fourth generation now. And we've been logging here on the peninsula, our family, 1864, I think you got here, 1874, wow. something like that. Still living on the same homestead since that since then. He homesteaded it back in, I think he made his final payment in 80, 1888. Wow, really? And he lived in a stump. My great grandpa Charles rode over here. Actually, he jumped off a lumber ship in Camino Island, wow. swam to shore, talked an Indian into rowing him in a canoe all the way over to uh, Hadlock or Port Hadlock, they yeah. call it Irondale because uh -huh. of the iron mill and stuff. And then he homesteaded out in Dave Valley. That's where we've been forever and a day. But anyway, uh, yeah, he lived in a stump, big 12 foot stump with a cedar shack. I got pictures to show you if you'd like to see them. It was pretty interesting, you know, when he was being a bachelor. Brought a wife in from Sweden. Wow. And she, uh, I think she died a year and a half after that she got here. So then he went back to Sweden and got another wife and brought wow. her here. And that's how our family got started. And anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, we've been logging ever since. I mean, that's all they ever did. Great grandpa actually worked at the Pope and Talbot's Mill in Port Ledlow. He'd walk from Day Bob to Port Ledlow every day, seven and a half wow. miles through the woods. Uh, yeah, running these cows and farm and all of that stuff. So we think we got bad things. Yeah, we don't have a bad commute wow. for work at all. Anyway. Wow, unreal. Yeah, I've been. I don't know, I've, I got stuck in this because dad had a truck for years and years and years. He drove for a guy named Earl Woodley. Uh -huh. And uh, he had a fleet of trucks and dad worked for him, which was, he got started by my grandfather, Irving Johnson, which was Charles's kid. Mm -hmm. And that was a family of seven. I can't remember all their names, there's so many. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Make a long story short, him and my uncle Steve, they actually had a logging business and then dad come along and drove truck for them. And they logged for Crown Zeller back and all that, way back in the 50s and 60s and stuff. Grandpa also had the, the McCullough chain shop, Chainsaw Shop there in Quilcene. The old Texaco that was there, yeah. it was a gas station and it was, uh, oh. I don't have to remember what it is. Oh, the Shell Station there? No, not the Shell Station, the Texaco Station, which is Gearhead. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And anyway, uh, it was Lee's Texaco way back in the day, right across from the community center. Yeah. But, uh, Oh, it was Olympic equipment. That's what he called it. Wow. But anyway, he had that forever in a day too. And I don't know, grandpa and dad there, they just kind of split ways. Dad went to work for Earl and that's where he ended up. But before that even came along there, dad wanted to, dad wanted to get a truck. He didn't want grandpa's truck. So Dave Bekovar got grandpa's truck and he put Dave Beckovar on the road for his first trip first job he ever got <laughs> Dave Beckovar would have never had anything if it wasn't for grandpa helping him get going <laughs> you ask him and he'll tell you the same thing wow and uh I don't know and then I started riding around with dad when I was just knee high and able to go and I, I drove truck with him for ever and a day I rode around road for everybody I mean up in the high country for Hanley and Phillips back in the day, big towers like that one there, mm -hmm. when we were doing old growth and stuff. And that's where I learned how to drive. I mean, seven years old, behind the wheel, I'm steering it up the mountain road, 18 miles back into the bushes. I mean, how else do you learn how to run? I mean, yeah. on the job training, can't beat it. And I wasn't smart enough to go do anything else. So I actually got a couple jobs driving truck. I worked for Bolton for about a year and then I drove chip truck for a while for the Shear Brothers over there in Belfair. And oh, yeah. after I left them, went to work for Dave and I didn't make it too long with Dave. Dave, nice guy at all, but I can't work with him. Mm -hmm. I just, it just, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. But <laughs> <laughs> he knows that we both do. Anyway, uh, so then I ended up working for a guy named Jerry McAfee. Oh, yeah. For about a year. You know, you remember Jerry. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. And then I decided, well, that's it. I've had enough. I went and bought my own. So dad wouldn't buy another truck. He bought, you know, he, we went out and I bought my own truck. And that's how I got my start. And I ran that old 65 Kenworth I had for, oh, I don't know, what was it, 18, 19 years, 20 years, something like that. Wow. And then I got tired of doing all that nonsense. And, I, and about 
2010, I think I had enough of everybody's crap and I just, no, no more traffic, no more cops. I'm done with this. And I turned the key off and I used to haul for Diet and Mark all the time too. I'd see go from them and that's how Mark and I got entangled because he knew I was sitting at home for, you know, he ain't going to sit around and get lazy. So Diet shows up and says, hey, you're coming to work for us. And that's oh, yeah. how I ended up being here with Mark. It's supposed to be a part-time job. Well, that was 12, 13 years ago. Wow. Yeah, so <laughs> just some... help me out. Fill the field exit. So, yeah, anyway. I gotcha. What a trip, man. So now, um, where'd you pick up that Kenworth from that you had? I got it from uh, Evan Waldron out of Port Angeles. Okay, now is that in the house? It was, uh, I can't think of the name of the company that they had it. They bought it in 1965 and they used to haul with it off the CQ mainline out there. It never even saw a blacktop besides when it left Seattle to out there and they never saw a blacktop for two wow. years. Uh, uh, Nubby, which was Evan, he drove it for a couple of years and then he went somewhere else and then he bought it when they put it up for sale and then anyway he, he had it for quite a few years mm -hmm. then they refurbished it all and then he ran it for a couple of years and then i come don't come along and yeah, yeah i'm really smart i'll buy a truck and, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway. okay yeah i ran that old beast that was a good old truck you couldn't couldn't beat it it was the simplicity of it was just yeah. Got in, started it up, yeah, drove key it. switch, light switch, turn signal. Yeah. So how could you go wrong? There's no computers. So, yeah. Mm. So mm. now, um, how long do you guys, you think you're going to be working with um, Mark uh, Southern for, uh, for Mason here? Oh, I couldn't tell you. I, it's hard to say. Yeah. We go where work is. I yeah. mean, it's just how it is. Would you rather work here um, doing sub work for these guys or um, you and Mark doing your own jobs or you just kind of, you just don't care, just kind of whatever? I don't care. I just run this thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I do care, but I don't care. I mean, I just want to stay busy and work. Yeah, you know, I that agree. kind of thing. Just steady. Plus, also, I do a bunch of hay during the summertime, too. I do 12,000 bales of hay every, oh, every summer. Oh, wow. Yeah, everybody says the summer off. I work. Yeah. Wow. So. Who's anyway, the biggest character you ever worked with? The biggest character. Oh, I, that's all. There's so many. Everybody. <laughs> There's so many. Depends on which character you're talking about. A screaming lunatic that's throwing rocks at you or, yeah, practical jokers. I mean, I've seen them all. Yeah. I've hauled for just about almost everywhere around here. I mean, guys like out of the harbor, that Jim Peterson. I worked for him and his crew, Bob and Lana. They were the shovel operators. They were pretty fun. They were a fun crew. I've uh, hauled for hints for years, yeah. Gary Hintz. I, yeah, we used to move them. They were about 11 or 12 trucks, I think, in, at one time. Wow. We were running 33 loads a day, 34 loads a day. That's a pretty good jack of wood. He was doing it all himself in the shovel. Two skaters, two haunts, feed him logs, and he was loading all the trucks. Wow. It was pretty impressive to watch. Wow. And what's your thought as far as um, where the industry is going? And uh, younger people getting into it is it sustainable I mean, that's a good question i really i just the markets are up and down so much all the time it's really hard to see. even like with a crew to stay with these they the market jumps around so bad that you know it's hard to keep a crew and keep them going I mean, the jobs are real scarce you know you guys sit for a couple months they just go somewhere else i mean they don't they don't hang around mark's lucky he got me because otherwise i've been pretty loyal you know staying around but otherwise yeah trying to keep somebody busy and keep them happy it's almost impossible yeah i mean everybody i know everybody fights that problem mm -hmm. but as far as young guys getting into it i would tell them no stay and go find something else to do yeah i mean it's once it gets into your blood you can't get rid of it i mean it's just like crab fishing or anything of that you're you're stuck the adrenaline junkie or, you know why skydive come out here and work I yeah mean, <laughs> it can be just as just as harry carry uh -huh. yeah but. okay well that's good advice i've yeah because i i get all sorts some people say um don't be a logger be a lawyer or um i couldn't be a lawyer sorry <laughs> No, I, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Yeah. But yeah, I I don't know. I don't even like to want to even hire a lawyer, much less have to want to be one. Yeah. My grandpa told me I was full of BS. I always a good BSer, so he you should might. be be a good lawyer. <laughs> well, I should have took his choice. You know, yeah, I would be standing in the mud if I'm uh, would have been a lawyer. Yeah. Now, um, okay, here's one. 
have uh, you ever seen anything just out of this world when you're out working? You go, there, I've got absolutely no explanation for this. Um, Sasquatch stories, anything like that? Just yeah, weird stuff. Yeah, one time we were talking, we were working for Sasquatch story. That's a good one. I'll tell you about that. I got lots of them. I mean, really, from driving on the road. But anyway, uh, we were talking about Sasquatch, and we were doing a job out on one th about mile post one thirty seven. I think it was about Crane Creek out there. Uh -huh. Everybody was talking about Sasquatch and all this other stuff, and I thought, yeah, 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 whatever. I've never really seen anything. I can't say yeah or nay. Well, I left and I was actually going to Allen Log with my little logs and I'm wandering up the freeway out the highway 101, pretty quiet road. And I come around this corner and there's this great big tall black thing standing in the middle of the road. Oh, yeah. What in the world? I rub my eyes. There, what is the heck is standing in the middle of the road? I get closer and I get closer and I get closer pretty real, pretty soon to realize it's an emu. You're kidding me. No, it's standing there on two legs. I'm thinking Bigfoot, yeah. you know, what in the world? No, this thing's got feathers. I <laughs> what is going on? But anyway, another wild story I could tell you about. I was sitting in Interforce trailer or Interforce uh, scaling ramp there to get ready to weigh in, dump my load. And I was next in line watching everything. And if anybody's ever dumped it in Interforce, they, they know what happened. But I seen what happens when somebody doesn't set the trailer brakes on a pup trader when they oh. disconnect from it oh. and to watch a pup trader go screaming through the yard backwards with nobody in control of it and slam into a big pile of boards that was pretty interesting oh, wow. to watch. all right and yeah i've never seen a tower go over never seen a boom get ripped off or anything like mm -hmm. that but i've i've seen some interesting things I'll say yeah that. how about your scariest experience out in the woods oh uh, I'd rather not talk about the scariest <laughs> thing that actually didn't happen in the woods. It actually happened in Brandon, and the guy died that morning. So, oh, gosh. yeah, it wasn't very, it wasn't a good situation. Yeah. It was back in 99 uh, when the Dosi Walps Bridge accident. I don't oh. know if you ever, ever heard about that. Yeah, I do remember that. traveling in line, and yeah, somebody stopped, and the second guy stopped, and the third truck didn't stop. Yeah. He came up 10 feet short. Yeah, and it all happened as we were coming on the hood, on the, that bridge. And to make a long story short, if I wouldn't have had a little bit more reflexes, I guess I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, just luck, I guess. But when I got my truck stopped, I was on the Dosi Bridge. Everybody knows how narrow it was. I was looking out at the pup trader out my passenger window. Wow. Because I could, I had, I didn't have enough room to stop. You know what I mean? I mean, mm -hmm. it was a wet, wet situation and. Yeah, it was all everything bad. It happened just so fast. Trucks don't stop. You know yeah. how that is. But yeah, that was probably about the worst that wow. morning. Okay. I don't really want to go into more detail. Yeah. It. It's, it was, yeah. Yeah, I hear you. I remember enough about the, it. The ironic thing is, is I met his wife a year to the day later, showed her that bridge. She had a little boy at that time. She was pregnant or just had him. And... Uh, Chandler was his name, and now he's got a truck. Now he drives a log truck and running around the all over. I don't know what kind of truck he has right now, but. Hmm. Wow, okay. Gotcha. Well, Charlie, I'll let you get going, and I appreciate you taking some time to talk with me. Uh, I could probably end up talking to, your all, talking to your off all afternoon. I mean, once you start going, you know. <laughs> but anyway.